Hello, Internet. Today is my birthday, and in honor of today, July 21st, this is 21 Things You Didn't Know About Me. First and foremost, this is what I look like on a day-to-day -day basis. I actually only wear nice shirts and get dolled up for YouTube, typically. Most of my appointments are done in a t-shirt and jeans. My hair is usually in a ponytail, and I almost never wear makeup on a day-to-day -day basis. I have an almost five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on a small farm in central New York, right outside of Ithaca. Usually we had a couple of horses, a couple of dogs, and about a gazillion cats. I still remember the first class I took in functional medicine was with Datis Karazian, and he was talking all about the thyroid. And honestly, guys, I went to this class and I thought, this is going to be so boring. I'm going to go, and he's going to talk about this little teeny tiny gland, and it's not that exciting. How is he going to talk for two hours about the thyroid gland? And my mind was blown. I still remember sitting there in that class. I was with my two roommates, one of whom is my best friend. And I remember both of us look at each, at each other like, just like minds blown the entire time. And I remember telling her when I got out of that class, I said, Mamie, he was talking about my mom the entire time. He was talking about the patient, the person who has been hypothyroid for years and has been on levothyroxine or synthroid for years and still feels like crap. But the doctors tell you it's all in your head because your TSH is fine and there's clearly nothing wrong with you. But there is. And I think I left that class. And this was in like 2010, by the way, guys. I'm pretty sure I left that class, immediately called my mom and basically said, mom, we're going gluten-free. <laughs> like it was so profoundly impactful and it just changed the direction I was going with my career. And I'll just never forget that. And who could do one of these lists without at least touching on some of my favorite music? So that's really hard for me to do because I have super eclectic taste in music and it really depends what I'm doing. For example, if I'm driving on the highway and I'm trying to occupy hours of my life, I'm gonna go back to things like Backstreet Boys and Spice Girls. But if I'm working out and I need more of an aggressive beat, I'll do like late 90s and early 2000s rap and hip hop. But on a day-to-day -day basis, if I'm just listening to music for the heck of it, or if I'm in my car or in my office, I most frequently listen to a band called Carbon Leaf, and I'll link that in the doobly-doo below. I'm almost always listening to Carbon Leaf or some manner of classic rock. So those are probably my two overall favorites, but again, depending on what I'm doing, I have really, really widespread taste in music. And finally, who could do one of these lists without talking about favorite TV shows? I'll keep it relatively recent because we could go way back to every show I've ever liked in my life, but a couple of my favorites these days have been The Umbrella Academy, and I'm so pumped that season two is so close to dropping. We've got 10 days, and then we get to watch season two of that amazing TV show. The Good Place is utterly fantastic. Like, words cannot even describe how much I love The Good Place and how perfect of a TV show it is. I also really love Grace and Frankie, and I was a tremendously big fan of Game of Thrones, right up until they murdered the show with that last season. And I still stand by. Watching that season was spectacular and the acting was spectacular. I just still can't even get over the trauma of what they did to the characters and their arcs. And I, I can't even. I keep an air mattress, pillow, and blanket in the office in case of a nap emergency. I was the proud owner of a pair of Jinko jeans when I was growing up. And oh my God, I think they were the bane of my mom's existence because they took forever to wash and dry but I love them so much. And I'm not talking about like a pair of Jinko jeans that were designed for girls. No, I had the real McCoy, the ones with the gigantic pockets. And I vividly remember putting a textbook in my back pocket and thinking it was awesome and hysterical that I could walk around with a textbook in the back pocket of my jeans. Believe it or not, for somebody with a YouTube channel and a social media presence, I consider myself to be sort of introverted. If I had to describe myself without taking any sort of quiz, I would say I'm an extroverted introvert. Um, I was way more introverted in high school and like earlier than that. And I gradually came out of my shell, but I'll tell you what, I'm good with one-on-one -on -one and I'm good with like two other people. But anything beyond a crowd of like three people, including myself, starts to exceed my limit for what I can handle. And I am the person, like if you took me to a party, or a big dinner party, or if I did something in a group setting, I am such an awkward turtle. Like, I will just wait there and politely wait for somebody to acknowledge me all night. 
and I will be the wallflower and I would just wait and not do anything. So it's really kind of funny to me that I have a YouTube channel and such a social media presence because I never anticipated this ever for my life. Um, but again, like I, I could be extroverted for certain things like YouTube videos and I could be extroverted in the sense of like individual human beings. But much beyond that, I consider myself actually quite introverted. You may be able to tell this already, but I am, shall we say, obsessed with a grocery store chain called Wegmans. Uh, Wegmans started in upstate New York about an hour and a half from where I grew up in Rochester, and it is just a New York state icon. I love that grocery store so much. We went to it when we lived in Buffalo. I went to it when I lived in the Ithaca area, and it just has everything. And they have so much gluten-free stuff and organic stuff and dairy-free stuff every dietary niche, every need that you could imagine, they have filled that need. And I love it so much. And here in the Triangle, we're going to get some Wegman stores. We already have one. And my husband and I are just crazy enough that we actually went and stood in line at a grocery store at six o'clock in the morning. We waited in line for an hour to go to the grand opening of the Raleigh Wegmans store. And it was so fun. I wore a shirt that said Ithaca is gorgeous. And everybody who was from New York was like high-fiving me and saying, yeah, Ithaca is gorgeous. And it was just so much fun. I'm really looking forward to when we get the Wegmans grocery store in Chapel Hill, hopefully in 2021. For all that I'm the gut health guru and herb nerd now, my first academic love, honestly, was anatomy and functional movement. I really thought I was going to do physical therapy for a long time, and I was so into knowing each and every muscle and each and every nerve that innervated those muscles and each kind of movement that we can do. And if your squat looks like this, what does it tell us about your hip flexors? I was so into that, that for quite a while, I thought that I was going to go much more strongly the physical therapy route with my practice. But then I found functional medicine and I fell in love and I figured out that there is so much that could be done with nutrition and herbal medicine. And I really just never looked back. I had a lot of pets growing up. I always had horses and dogs and cats, and sometimes we had chickens and other animals. But the pet that stands out amongst all of the rest is Ben the butterfly. I kid you not, I had a pet butterfly for a short period of time. He was a rescue. I saw a bunch of my cats tormenting something in the front yard, and I ran out to see what it was, and it was a monarch butterfly. And his wing was injured to a point where he couldn't fly and defend himself anymore. And I just took him in, and that was my pet. And my mom still remembers I had like the butterfly was on one pillow of my bed and I slept with him and he, I don't know, like it was so cool to have him as a pet. And I remember this in my brain now as an adult. I feel like I had been the butterfly for like a year of my life, but in actuality, he probably only lived for like a week, but I still remember having been the butterfly. And I still remember too, I would bring him to school with me to take care of him during the day. And it was such a big deal that I, Pretty sure my third grade class had a little Ben the Butterfly funeral when he passed away. So I am six feet tall and my best friend is about five feet tall and much tinier than I am. And that just, honest to God, it amused me so much right from the moment we met. And a few years into being roommates together, I started this photo series that I call Big Things, Little Things, where if I am out at the store and I see like a gigantic stuffed animal and a tiny stuffed animal, I just, I immediately think of me and my best friend, Mamie. And so I started this photo series where I send pictures of incredibly big things, incredibly tiny things, or the better is when you find them together. And I still, to this day, years later, I text Mamie all the time with big things, little things photos. At the risk of telling you a really embarrassing story, I'll share this one with you. So I was a rower all throughout high school and college, and I had an athletic scholarship, and rowing was my job in undergraduate. Like, there's no question about that. And I'll never forget it. We had a practice in mid-May. It was the last practice of the day in Buffalo. We were getting ready to go to our biggest race of the year, and my friend and I brought water bottles with us to practice like you would do, and we practiced at noon. Normally, we would practice at 5.30 in the morning, but because it was finals week and everybody's schedule was conducive to it, we ended up practicing at 12 o'clock noon in mid-May, and it was god-awful hot and god-awful humid. And my friend Jill and I drank our water bottles within, it must have been 10 minutes of leaving the dock, and then we were so thirsty. 
And I just, I cringe to tell you this now, we drank Creek water. Like we filled up our Nalgene, chock full of BPA, by the way, back in the day, we didn't know, but we filled up our Nalgene's in the Tonawata Creek in Amherst, New York. And we filled that bad boy up and we drank like two Nalgene's worth of water from the Tonawata Creek that day. And to their credit, all of my, my crewmates and my coxswain and my coach, they were all like, don't do it. And we did it. And guys, we got so sick, like profoundly sick. And I'll never forget it. My mom told me after that, that, oh my God, you need to go get a stool test done because you probably have a parasite. I didn't do it. I did not get a stool test done until years later. Not until I got into functional medicine, really. And my gut was crazy. But at the time, I did have two parasites. And I just, a part of me will always wonder, did I have those parasites for like six years or eight years? And I just didn't know it. My favorite Disney princess movies, and I say that with quotes because they're not all princesses, probably are Rapunzel from Tangled, Mulan, and Frozen 2, specifically. Frozen 1 is a fine movie, but I really, really enjoyed Frozen 2. My husband and I were set up for this semi-blind date to go to the Engineers Ball or E-Ball together. And I still remember my friends were all horrified, but at the time, and at the time when I met my husband's family for the first time, the last two or three inches of my hair was dyed bright pink. I loved that hairdo. Oh my gosh. It was the most fun. I, uh, I forget what exactly inspired it, but it was modeled after Baby Spice. And I remember my friends telling me, you've got to cut that crap out of your hair. Your, your future in-laws are going to think you're so weird. And guess what? They totally did think I was weird and they were fine with it. And they love me anyway. So I'm glad that I didn't chop out my pink hair. But yes, I had bright pink tipped hair when I first started going out with my husband and when I met his family. My absolute number one goal in life is to visit Japan. I can't wait, but I need to be rich before I go there because I'm going to buy so much ridiculous Sailor Moon stuff that I'm gonna to need to hire somebody to drive a ship across the ocean to get it all back to the United States for me. For all that I was much more quiet and introverted in high school, I did do some pretty wacky things that I think made a name for myself, for better or for worse. Uh, remember my aforementioned love of all things Japan and all things anime? Well, when I was in high school, I think a junior or possibly a senior, I made a pair of pleated Hakama samurai pants by hand, no sewing machine, no template, no nothing. I made these by hand out of linen and it was my pride and joy. I worked on them for months on end and one day out of the blue, I just wore them to school. It was not Halloween. It was not spirit week. It was not any reason that you would dress up, but I wore my samurai pants and my full blown costume. I even took a pair of my purple socks and I cut them and then like sewed them again so that the big toe was separate from the rest of the toes so that I could wear them with flip flops. It was quite the costume and I wore this to high school just out of the blue. Um, so I was probably known as like the tall, quiet, weird girl after that point, but it was so much fun and all of my anime nerd friends were like high-fiving me for the entire day. And it was one of the most memorable days in high school that I remember. My favorite Halloween costume I ever made was Super Senior, which I wore on my Super Senior year of undergrad. Most days I drive a scooter to work. Sometimes being in this profession, I start to think about my own health and think about my own health history and wonder, how am I as healthy as I actually am? Because I'll tell you what, I have had like 18 humans worth of antibiotics in my lifetime. I've had surgeries. I have had some weird stuff happen to this body. And I don't honestly know how I'm as healthy as I am. And I don't have more problems. But what I can tell you is that I have three main theories. And these have really shaped my health journey up until this point. Number one is I'm pretty laid back and fancy free and type B. Sometimes I joke that I'm type B to a point where it might be pathological. But truly, I am always the person to go with the flow and be pretty darn chill. And I think that that has served me well in life, particularly as I work with more people who have anxiety and their adrenals are burnt to a crisp. I really think that my ability to manage my stress and be as relaxed as I am 
has served me really, really well in life. So that's number one. My second theory is that I grew up on a farm and I was around, God only knows how many microbes all of my childhood up until I was 18. And I mean, I'm not just talking like I pet the dogs. I'm talking, I would sit on the floor of the barn amongst the manure and cat poo. And I don't even know what else, but like I would sit on the floor of a nasty, dirty, stinky barn and I would play with the barn cats for hours on end. And I would brush the horses and I would play with the dogs and I would do whatever. But like, I was probably acquiring mad microbes all of my childhood and adolescence. And it really makes me think that for all that I was killing off a lot of microbes with all of the antibiotics I had in my childhood, thank God I was acquiring some microbes sitting around in that poo filled barn. And then number three, and to round out this list, I really think that my supportive family has played a role in this. I. I just can't even imagine where I would be without them. But I have the most supportive mom and dad in the entire world. And I've known all of my life that I'm so loved by them. And my grandparents were amazing. And I just really can't thank everybody in my life enough. So family and friends and people who got me up until this point, thank you so much. Here's to another wonderful 34 years of life. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.